All right, five minutes after 9 o'clock. It is Thursday morning, the last day of 2015. And it's time for Veterans News, and Hank Whittier is in the studio. Good morning, Hank. Today. Just, just two of us today. My God, this yeah. is the lightest crew we've had uh, in a long time. <clears throat> All the promises. They're pre- preparing for uh, tonight, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right, right. A lot of partying going on, but uh, we're glad to be here. And glad that uh, WOCA is having us again. The voice. The voice. The source. The source and the voice. <laughs> Uh, and you guys went out to see Jeb Bush uh, this week, you and Joe. and Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Joe uh, did took the a video and all that stuff. Represented yeah. Vets Helping Vets, yeah. Good, Good. I pre- we appreciate you doing that. I, I, I was hung up with a vet. Anyway, unfortunately, uh, I hate to end the year like this, but we do have casualties. And um, Gary, you want to go first with yours? Yeah, we have quite a few. Uh, I'll go ahead and do bad, the police it's a bad, fire. Yeah, I, wish, I wish it was otherwise. Maybe next year when we sit here, uh, it won't be as bad. First, we have Trooper Eli M. Carson of the New Jersey State (coughs) Police. His end of watch was Thursday, December 17th. We have Commander Frank Rodriguez of the Puerto Rico Police Department in Puerto Rico. His end of watch was December 28th. We have uh, Rosario Hernandez de Hoya, uh, also of the Puerto Rico Police Department in Puerto Rico. Her end of watch was December 28th also. And we have uh, Officer Juan Feliciano of the New York Police Department, whose end of watch was December 29th of this year also. Uh, All of these police officers were killed in the line of duty. And we have several firefighters also. Um, We have firefighter Patrick R. Walterman, who died on the 28th of December. He was with the Hamilton Fire Department in Hamilton, Ohio. And we have Lewis Pop Patty, who is a combination fire and police officer with the Warwick Township Fire Company Number 1 in Jamerson, Pennsylvania. His date of death was the 22nd of December. We have uh, Captain Willie B. Ratliff of the City of Clarksdale Fire Department in Clarksdale, Minnesota. His date of death was the 21st of December. We have Captain Jack Rose of the Mount Marion Fire Department in Socrates, New York. His date of death was the 15th of December. We have Firefighter Sidney Weiner who was with uh, Fire Department Number 7 Township Rescue in New Bern, North Carolina. His date of death was December 15th. We have Firefighter Stacy Crawford with the Navajo County Emergency Service Fire (coughs) District Number 1 of Powell, Texas. And Stacy's death was uh, the 19th of December. All these also killed in the line of duty. Hank, you got some DOD? Yeah, unfortunately I do. I have uh, Department of Defense identifies Air Force casualties report. Uh, all killed in Afghanistan in a, in a suicide bombing uh, they were, while they were on patrol. And it's Major Adriana von der Bergen. Um, she was 36 from, from Minnesota. Staff Sergeant Michael Sinko, uh, he was 28, Texas. Staff Sergeant Peter Taub, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Staff Sergeant Chester McBride, 30, Statesboro, Georgia. Technical Sergeant Joseph Lamb, uh, he was from the Bronx, New York. And Staff Sergeant Louis Boncasia, uh, from 31, he was from also New York. All killed in action in Afghanistan. Anybody, you, nobody local that we have nobody lost. Nobody local that we've of, heard. Yeah. Larry.
Okay, let's just say, let's hope next year, <clears throat> that's our wish for this this uh, holiday, is next year we won't be reading all these casualties. Right, it, would be, right. it would be nice. Saw something the other night on one of the news programs about how many police officers were killed in action so far, and I think 145 this year, which is very high. And uh, that was that was up last week, so uh, unfortunately I'm sure it's going to be higher next time we talk about it. And, and uh, soldiers and sailors and the Air Force and Marines and Coast Guard and our firefighter friends and Department of Corrections people doing their jobs every day so uh, you know we can live safely uh, hopefully next year will be a lot better year than this year has been so it's been a good year and a bad year you know we lost some lot of good people locally and uh, we had some great things um, accomplished so uh, we're looking forward to a great next 216 thanks to, and help for you folks out here at WOCA we really appreciate all the support you give us and it's going to be an exciting year you know we're going to be working on uh, a lot of big projects this coming year brought some new people in Brad Nemo is going to be the assistant director with Vets Helping Vets that's a big addition for us and Brad brings a lot of talent to the table uh, and we're going to be going after a lot more housing related uh, programs that we want to kind of push for veterans so a lot of good things are happening and of course our Veterans Resource Center thanks to the help from uh, Marion County Commissioners and Stan McLean and George Albright and David Elsperman and all those good people have been helping us out with that. We're about ready to start the project for, uh, in terms of hiring an architect and getting the plans. Oh, cool. and, yeah, getting yeah, it's it's moving along. I mean, we're Brad and I will be uh, <clears throat> starting the grant process next week, which is <laughs> a challenge in and of itself uh, because you write these federal grants; they're a little they're a little complicated. But uh, we're pretty sure that we know what we're doing. We'll get some significant money to help some of the rehab building. The county's putting in some money, and uh, that we're, we're hoping we're shooting for a target date of next Veterans Day of having that resource center open oh, with, nice. yeah. with a number of uh, uh, veterans agencies in there serving veterans in a one-stop sort of setting. So we're looking forward to that. It's going to be an exciting year. So your, your office would move? Yeah, we'll be moving over there as soon as the building's open. Um, we'll be the Essentially, that part of the building will technically belong to us. Uh, on a 20-year, a 20-year lease. Oh wow! Yeah, you no. still going to be there <clears throat> after 20 years? Uh, the way it's going, I probably will be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that's what Vivian said too. <laughs> you know. And I think somehow I think eternity because I believe there's a there's a mausoleum being built as part of the rehab. <laughs> oh no! Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. So I'll be there forever. Uh, but you know, I can't think of a better place to be other than with other veterans, and uh, as long as we're serving them. But no, it's it's an ex we're excited about it, and Brad and I are excited about working on it, and Cheryl, Amy, and the county commissioners. It's been really, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about them. Uh, they're, they're, it's been really a great year for us working with uh, some of the local politicians to serve veterans better. So that's what we're, we're striving for. Gary, you want to talk about who makes this possible besides WOCA? I sure do, and, and, and not only today, throughout out the whole year. You know, we want to thank WOCA, uh, the source here, for putting us on the air every week to get this news out to veterans. And also all year, uh, Bob Wines, Camellia Garden and Nursery has been giving us uh, veterans news here. And, uh, you know, when it comes to landscaping, Wines has what you need. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. Everything from small plants to large trees, mulch, fertilizer, and much more. And if you pick it, Bob Wines will deliver it. They'll plant the trees you purchase from them, and if they plant them, they'll guarantee them. Bob Wines Camellia Gardens has been keeping things blooming in Ocala since 1952. Now you can find them at 2610 Southeast 38th Street in beautiful Ocala, and when you make that visit uh, to their nursery if you let them know you're a veteran you'll get a 10 percent discount and be sure and tell them you heard about them right here on the source woca radio and the wonderful folks we also want to thank who most of the year have supported us also the ocala ford dealers and when we say ocala ford dealers we're not only talking about the one in ocala we're talking about the ford dealers that serve gainesville 
Leesburg, the Villages, and Bellevue. Now, on your Ford dealerships, okay, the main one, of course, is located right here in Ocala, 2816 North Pine Avenue, and they're even expansion, expanding. they got work going on down there, so go on in and see them. You can get your new car. You can get your used car. You can get your Ford car or truck service there, and if you're not interested in buying quite yet, they will be glad to lease you and give you a very special lease on a new Ford vehicle. Good time to thank everybody else in town and outside of town too. It's been helpful to us in uh, donations and uh, you know m- many t- you know, much too numerous to mention by name. But really, folks have been very very generous this year. Can't you know you can't uh, you can't help people without resources. Uh, good intentions are great, and a lot of what we do is is finding other other sources for them to get some help. But sometimes you just need dollars and cents to do it. And uh, folks have been very generous this year, so. Um, you know, thank you guys out there. We really appreciate it. It's been a good year. Um, I think we have a break. Already? Mm-hmm. My goodness. We'll be right Time back. flies. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Some fog patches for a wild Thursday morning. Otherwise, very warm and humid with intervals of clouds and sunshine. There can be a shower in spots, mainly this afternoon. The high today, 82 to 86. Thursday night, partly cloudy, warm and muggy with some fog late, though 65 to 69. For New Year's Day, patchy morning fog, otherwise mostly cloudy, warm and humid with a shower in spots again, mainly in the afternoon, the high in the upper 70s to low 80s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. Hi, this is Brad. I want to take a moment to talk about a serious issue. In the next five years, the aviation industry is projected to have a shortage of commercial pilots. Now is the time to start training. Ocala Flying Club has started a scholarship for the youth of Marion County ages 17 to 24. The club will donate up to $4,000 towards a pilot's license. This will help get the student on their way to obtain their commercial pilot license. If this sounds like something you would be interested in, or if you know someone that would be, please contact Ocala Aviation Services, 861-7484. 18 minutes after 9 o'clock, it is New Year's Eve day, and we're doing Vets News, and uh, Hank Whittier is here. Last one of the year, yeah. Outstanding. It's hard to believe. It's been, I, you know, I keep on saying just a few years, and you keep on reminding me it's by 10 or 11 or 12. At, at least 10, it. yeah. We do have it marked time. somewhere. So. Funny, we, neither you or I have changed very much over that period of time. <laughs> <you know? laughs> if anything, I think we've got more distinguished. It looking. doesn't seem like it, but no. when you look at the photos, you see it. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to look at the photos. <laughs> I found, an, no, old, no I found an old photo of you with uh, Senator Graham. Uh, Gosh, all those years ago when you had- oh yeah we're in the conference room over there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you know really I, I tell you he he's a great guy I mean I I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to meet him I I know he's uh, I I never considered him liberal or conservative but just a good person a good human being that did a lot for Florida and did a lot for vets and we got to know him personally and uh, a great guy I don't know how it's how he's doing health wise and all that mm, I haven't heard yeah, from him in a yeah. while but. He's a good man, and there's a lot of good people out there, and a lot of good people, uh, uh, you know, another one who got behind the veterans and helped out and did a lot of good things. He was a great governor, too. He was governor. Yeah, I, I thought so. I, you know, I was in, I worked for the state of Florida when he was the governor. I enjoyed working for him. I didn't know him at the time, but I got to know him a little bit later. Very, very personable, very approachable guy. Um, got a couple of events coming up. That um, There's a golf tournament uh, March uh, 6th, 7th out there at Golden Ocala. I don't have all the information in front of me. I need to get that this coming week. They sent me a notice. It's in. It's the Donnie um, Harrison Foundation Golf Tournament. Oh, wow. Yeah, we set up, they set up a foundation in Donnie's name because Donnie did so much great work around the community. Uh, and uh, they're going to do another golf tournament on those dates. I think it's a two-day event golf tournament and then a dinner and all of that. 
I'll have some more information with specific uh, what it's going to cost to play and how you can participate. But, uh, you know, it's really something uh, that they set up, and I'm glad they did. That's a nice memorial to him hmm. and all the good work he did. And uh, so we'll be participating in that, and I think we're one of the one of the charities receiving some benefit out of that. And we'll be passing on a lot of great information about that. We also set up Vets Helping Vets, set up a scholarship in his name out of the Community Ed Center. Um, you know, for a veteran, and uh, his uh, his wife Linda and I got together, and uh, we thought that was another good way of honoring Donnie, and uh, he would want that because he believed in education and, uh, and the changes it makes in people's lives. So, got behind that. <clears throat> we have a. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has talked about this. Have you talked about the boxing thing we're doing? Not the new one. Ah, well, we are talk. We are going to have a boxing a box off uh, boxing match uh, April the first, April Fool's Day appropriately okay <laughs> uh, and we've got some local folks fighting uh, chris blair the sheriff is fighting no way oh yeah he's oh, fighting wow. he's fighting baby cakes uh and i'm not sure the bork jay bork <laughs> and then we got commissioner david moore fighting uh jesse sampson oh no we got uh, state's attorney office office uh, pete brigham fighting uh anthony james uh, if you know anthony james anthony's about uh, six foot three and about 300 pounds so uh, that may be the end of Peter Brigham at the state's attorney's office. Oh, but, no. uh, and then, uh, let me see, Stan McLean is fighting. Who is Stan fighting? I forget. Stan is fighting somebody, but Stan McLean, the county commissioner, is fighting another, another pro fighter. I don't know if we're going to have any county commissioners left. <laughs> and <laughs> so there may be some openings for folks if you want to run. Kathy Bryant's not getting in the ring. Well, Kathy is getting in the ring. Is and she? Yeah, and she's gonna fight a real mean, mean. It says mean and nasty, the hammer, Hank Whittier. <laughs> Oh, I knew you would get her. I knew you would get her, yeah. I had a feeling. I told her I believe in uh, you know. <laughs> it's a dirty job. Someone's got to do oh, it. Oh, right? man. Do you hold back the punches? Now, I have to tell you, no, I'm not holding anything back. Got Neither her. is Kathy. Now, listen, you know, I believe in equal opportunity <laughs> and, and equal pay and equal pain. Now you won't hit her. I know you won't hit her. <laughs> really? <laughs> Well, Kathy, can I hope you you don't think Kathy will hit me? I think she'll hit you. Yeah, yes. I, no, she's got. I just don't think you'll I hit her. I have to tell you, she's been talking smack out there. Uh, well, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So anyway, that's April the first over at the Livestock Pavilion. Tickets are uh, ten bucks a pop, and it'll be a lot of fun. We'll have some food available and all that good stuff. It'll be a lot of laughs uh, for some people, not for everybody, but. Uh, <laughs> And there may be a couple of other surprises. We're working on a couple of other people to, to get in, in the ring, and we'll see. Do you want to fight, Larry? I, I'd, <laughs> I'd look like it'd be good. That's not a personal I, challenge. I look though. like I'd be good, right? But I would be horrible. I, I wouldn't have a clue what to do. Well, I don't think any of us are good. The other people who we're fighting are good. Now, Kathy and I, that's probably the, the comic relief of the night. <laughs> but uh, Chris, I know. It's, Chris it's, Blair is getting in there with a real Well, banger. I would think a sheriff would know how to fight. I would hope he does, because yeah. if he doesn't, he's in trouble. <laughs> And as I say, there'll probably be, maybe there'll be openings for the sheriff and openings for and all Samson, these guys. Samson, that's, that's his background, yeah, right? Yeah, well, Samson's boys, um, yeah, they're, 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 uh, they're very good. They're golden glove type kids. And uh, Anthony's a boxer. I mean, he's yeah, he Anthony goes to his used boxing to, gym yeah, or something. He used to, yeah, Anthony, uh, he used to fight, apparently. And uh, somehow Pete Brigham, unfortunately, got him. So, uh, the, you know, we'll see how many of us survive the night. The paramedics will be there. I can videotape it for yeah. you. Yeah, come in video. Yeah, we're going to get it videotaped. And again, it's ten dollars. It's going. It's a, it's a charity event for vets helping vets. And uh, I, I just appreciate all those folks willing to jump in there and be humiliated, mm. and <laughs> take pain. We appreciate that. So that's April the first, and we'll be talking a lot about that. And we've got a couple of other folks we're working on to step into the ring. Got a a, a number of uh, local people who are going to be referees who. We'll probably look the other way when Kathy kicks me and all that stuff. <laughs> no, they won't. They won't look the other way. <laughs> <laughs> well, they won't take a point away from her anyway. Anyway, we're looking forward to that. So we've got a lot of things coming up and a few other events coming up. And uh, it's going to be a busy year and a good year, and we're looking forward to it. And uh, we'll sit here next year and not have, as I say, not talk about all the casualties because a lot of this stuff will be over, I hope. And the court program, you guys still need some help over there? Yeah, we need a lot of help in that? Um, because, you know, the, the big turn in uh, 2015, and it came towards the end of the year, we have the new manual out. Um, they have expanded the court. Um, 
so it's not only combat veterans anymore so so naturally there's larger numbers and we do need uh mentors and you can contact us at uh, vets helping vets simply by dialing area code 352-433-2320 and we'll set you up to come in and um fill out some paperwork and do an application because of course we do have to clear you for the court but um if you got the time you know we sure can use the help yeah. Well, and again, that's the other the other project that we'll have um, once that building is complete. Uh, we'll be using a lot more volunteers, a lot more counseling will be going on, a lot more mentoring will be going on right in the building. Right now, the space just isn't available. I mean, you hate to say it, but sometimes you have to do what you have to do with these folks and then move them on because you're kind of stepping on each other. It's it's almost comical some days. Um just don't have. I mean, <laughs> Gary will tell you. You know, you have to. You have to take a sidestep to open a drawer if you want to get in there. Some days, but but uh, I mean, veterans need a place they can call their own, place they can spend some time and get some counseling and work with other veterans and get the services they need. And that's really the whole purpose behind that old bowling alley building. And um, you know, uh, it's we're probably the only ones in the state doing that. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, the person only has to come to one space, you know, because usually we have to send a veteran, you know, to three or four different places, and it's very frustrating. Yeah, it is, and I agree. And, again, that, and the VA is going to play a role as well. We're not sure exactly who they're putting over there with us, but they'll be over there periodically. We've talked to some of the programs at the college to do the same thing. So it, it'll, it'll be, it's a big deal for Marion County and for the veterans we serve. Gary reminded me, too, one of the big things that's happened this year that's really a positive is the far less homeless veterans uh, than we used to deal with uh, four or five years ago. That's hmm. really uh, really in part thanks to the, the VA. The VA has done a much, much better job dealing with homeless veterans. It's not, it's not completely successful, but it's, it's well on its way. And that and, and their mental health services have got significantly better. And a lot locally, a lot of that has to do with Dr. Knapp over here and his contributions to... Will he to, be moving uh, over there too? No, he. But we've talked about some of his people coming over there periodically, uh, nutrition and that sort of thing. Because we're going to, in, in addition to the to all the other services, what I want to do is start a wellness center there, where we're starting to track uh, <clears throat> vets and try to get them to have a more healthy lifestyle, uh, which means eating properly and that's exercising and all that. So. We're trying to put all that together. You know, it, it, we're probably not going to have that day one, but as time goes on. So there is an office over there designated for the VA. We have a group of uh, nurses who want to volunteer and do in the community, just folks in the community want to serve veterans on their off time, willing to participate in that program and a wellness program. So a lot of great things are happening again now that, you know, it's all contingent upon us having the space to do it. So now we'll have the space to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, we went from, you know, I originally had 200 square feet or so at the VA when I worked with them, and then I went to about six, 700 square feet where we are now, and that building will provide uh, that front part of the building for both the county operations with Jeffrey Askew and ourselves. It's about 15,000 square feet. Wow. So that's quite, you know. That's a big and, difference. And it's, the whole idea yeah. is to serve veterans more efficiently and, that's it. Listen, I just want to wish everybody a happy new year. Thanks for all your support for this past year. Uh, thank you for your service, and uh, God bless America, folks. America. Friends.